And, uh, and uh, I know more than Patalia. Yeah. I don't get it. I don't know why Patalia I, and uh, Farrington kind of jumped her over Patalia. And he's kind of been, uh, so I don't know. I don't know who's calling the shots over, but someone's making some bad game plans. No, I think Wayne is frustrated because I've asked Wayne. Rookies. Up, rookies. That's why I keep hearing rookies. We don't have time for a learning curve. So what's going to break this? You know what? I wanted to say on TV, Harold Hall you still told are. This me. Is the ca the oh, camera's still Harold rolling. Harold Hall told me four years ago there was never a deal going to happen. I have 90 days left till January when he, to say he was right. <laughs> and I have never given up yet trying to um, make this happen. Would you have locked the doors? Would I have locked the doors? I certainly would not have let anybody gone home. I certainly wouldn't be here right now. I think it's something serious. And if not, then I think they should convene our transportation committee. We need to continue this conversation to find out where we're at. But just to go home and cool off and do what? It just delays it. How about Cali? I mean, let's say Snyder's over in China and Cali was here. I mean, what, what's I your relationship? Been, I, very yeah. good, very yeah. good. And I've heard Brian has been, uh, Lieutenant Governor has been doing very well trying to build a coalition. And, I, and, and to my knowledge, uh, the Senate has been very supportive of the governor <clears throat> and Tim. And I, I haven't heard really, I think it's leadership between the, Senate and the House I'm hearing that are at odds more than anybody else at odds. Um, Tim has been, I think, shown time and time again through Broger's administration and Cotter's that he's willing to work, uh, willing to put up votes. But he has to understand, I don't think it's unreasonable to find out what's your 600 million cuts Why won't they like? give that to you? And obviously, I know. I, I mean, would anybody make a decision that you're going to give up something if you don't know what it means? And then have to explain after you took the vote. It's just not reasonable. You got to say though that you're getting closer than at any other point, don't you think? Since the since the proposal won vote, you're getting closer toward a final solution. Oh, to the closest, the closest the I think we ever one. were when Bolger was here when and December, the Senate sent it sent it over last yeah. session, and we would have took the vote. We wouldn't even have this conversation yeah, today. That's as close as we ever were. And right now it's Nine like starting on ground zero again. And all the members that just came in. The, uh, they took these pledges. They had to know these was the issue when they took <coughs> office. Uh, I don't know what their position was going to be, knowing that this was still going to be an issue that they uh, campaign on. So they're, they're, it's not getting us closer. So the problem has been the fresh. Do you think it's the freshmen, the new people who have come in? They, they've, there's had to be a learning curve, and they've come in with a strict ideology? I, I, think, there, I think that there has been a strong emphasis on the leadership on uh, this session on ideology trying to build roads, and that just won't build roads. Ideology won't build roads. Correct. And their ideology, from what you see, is we can't raise any new revenues, and I don't think anybody argues, <clears throat> and it's been the governor's statement from day one, we need new revenues, and I've said right along, if we don't need new revenues, then what has it been, why they haven't been taken out of the budget, and why don't we have a structural program set and forth? If the money's there, <clears throat> and that's the argument, then just use it, but obviously it's not. So let's not fool the uh, people, because I think we're entitled to them. And, you know, I had two bills, and again, if it's really about trying to do something for the roads, who would argue that reducing the waste to 80,000 right now to preserve and protect our roads, even while we're at the standoff, wouldn't be a good idea just to protect so we didn't see like what happened in 75, more destruction on the roads. And second of all, the other bill I had was where it says that if your car is damaged by a pothole, you don't have to pay the deductible or get your insurance premium raised because why we don't have political courage to fix the roads and you would assume to have a reasonable expectation your roads are good. Look how many cars just got hurt by 76 or 75, right? Who's benefiting? Insurance companies are making money on the, uh, on the insurance premiums and motorists. So who are we protecting? What is this really about? So are from the start of your tenure five years ago, you think probably the lame duck session last December <clears throat> was the best single time you had to pass things up until now. Absolutely. It was, we lost our shot. That, that was, was it. it. That How was do you think shot. it'll happen the next? Do you think you have to wait till the next lame duck? Oh, absolutely. That'll be the only next shot because unfortunately, <laughs> the, the, unfortunately, <laughs> Lansing, the Lansing never runs by a uh, seasonal calendar. Lansing runs by a, a campaign calendar. So we know if it doesn't happen by this December, you know it's not happening in the House election next year. So it would have to be in lame duck. And, you know, but then the problem is you've lost three construction seasons. Michigan only has a, a very short window, six months. And that's the problem when you have to do a lot of work with no money or project a lot of work with no money with Mother Nature, you know, dictating how much our season is. How many Democratic votes did you have for the package on for, Wednesday? On Wednesday? Mm-hmm. The one that, none, obviously, they couldn't peel any of us off. Did well, nobody, were, nobody, wait a minute, well, they had Harvey, didn't they? Well, yeah, okay, you know, well, look at the herself. word was circulating that there might have been nine Democrats 
willing to vote yes, and three additional, the nine from Detroit. Okay, did you ever hear that? No, I, I think I give a lot of credit to uh, Representative Brian Banks. He's done a fabulous job trying to uh, make communications open, not peeling off. He too has very great concerns, as the mayor did, about those 600 million cuts, what it's gonna look like. Uh, he has a lot of the same concerns, and his members talk about it, and they've stand pretty steadfast wanting to have those same answers before they're going to commit to anything. What about uh, the mayor's role in this, Duggan? Um, f what have you seen come out of that? I mean, the stories were that he was working the Detroit caucus to try and put something together. I, it, you'd have Cotter's, uh, Speaker Cotter's one that brought him down here. Um, so Speaker Cotter would be the one that was trying to have negotiations with him. Um, from what I understand from the mayor's chief of staff, I didn't get a chance to speak to the mayor directly, but the chief of staff said clearly he was concerned with what exactly the Detroit caucus and Brian was about those cuts, what those cuts are going to look like. Um, clearly was up here based on request from the uh, speaker, <clears throat> he had some legislation for Detroit, but that legislation was sitting out there 2011. You'd have to question the suspect of why that legislation came up yesterday. So if you were grading the speaker, what would you give him? Uh, if I was grading him? <laughs> And communication, <laughs> his communication skills, I think, are, 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 have room for improvement. I that wasn't a great, that was a statement. <laughs> Incomplete. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Don't help her out, Ballinger. <laughs> there was a Thank you. There was a lifeline. <laughs> Thank you. you I appreciate one. that. I appreciate it. Incomplete. Now, right Representative now. Banks, uh, he came into the legislature under somewhat of a cloud, as you he sure are did. aware. Mm -hmm. But evidently, he's really turned things around and turned out to be a really pretty solid member, right? He had, and, 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 and I always judge people how, you know, people treat me. He has been a person that, what he he says he does, and what he does, he says. I've not seen anything different. He's been respectful. He's been he's been hardworking there. I see him working very closely with his his delegation. And again, you know, Cindy and Todd thing. You know, I don't know them. I haven't really had an opportunity <clears> to talk <throat> to them. So I base my relationships not based on R's and D's, but the character and the individual that you are, and you prove to be. And I, and I, he's proven exactly what you said. Uh, to be a good so leader for the caucus. So he's proven everything as a legislator that Gamrat and Corser have not. Oh, and more. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think Mr. Mashoka would have handled this differently than Mr. Cotter? Um, I think they have different, clearly different personalities. And if I had to guess, again, I, I don't like to be hypothetical, but I think they have different uh, communication skills. And I think, yes, I think that. Well, he's a big extrovert compared yeah. to Cotter. Yeah. I mean, he'd, yeah. he'd at least be communicating. Yeah, something. and and he has a little bit more of a demanding uh, presence in issues. I think. Demanding, what does that mean? Um, you know, he doesn't just stay and determine what you want to do. I think he has more of a leading fashion as to getting to the to bottom of things. Whenever we talked with him, he never let you kind of just get off with, well, I'll let you know. It's more more forceful to know what that means. All right. He's insistent. Go home and get some rest. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Representative. Thank you. Appreciate it's always it. good. Thank you. All right, guys. Good show.